okay so here we will be going to learn Citrix virtual apps and desktop administration right so let me Citrix virtual apps and desktop administration in short it's CVAD okay Citrix virtual apps and desktop administration okay so I'm not having that much space to type the entire yeah. thing. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, fine. okay. So <clears throat> basically, if we talk about the Citrix, right? So what mm -hmm. is Citrix? So if someone asks you what is Citrix, so you have here a simple definition. It is a company headquartered in US Florida, and it is most mm -hmm. popular for two products, which is known as Janap and Gen Desktop earlier, right? Mm -hmm. But now they guys rename those products to Citrix virtual apps and desktop. Okay, so earlier they were known as Janap. Okay, Janap, yep. Janap and Gen desktop. Where it is? Okay, Gen desktop. Okay, but hmm. after the release of version seven point xx, like seven point xx, I am not getting the exact version. It it one uh, seven point one five something like this. Okay, so after release of seven point xx version. They guys rename the product from Janap Gen Desktop to Citrix Virtual Apps and Virtual Desktops. Okay. Okay. So this is a basic definition. How Citrix was? Let it be. I will let you know. Okay. So uh -huh. before we start Citrix and how it works and what are the core component, right? What mm -hmm. is the class structure? What we have? What is the lab setup? Okay. What I have created. So just let me know. What is virtualization? Do you have any idea what is virtualization and how it works and why we use virtualization in production or in any other, you know, uh, field? Yeah, uh, I have a little uh, knowledge of virtualization. Virtualization means yeah, we virtually created the mm -hmm. machines in a uh, physical machine, right? Physical mean physical machine we are creating multiple. Virtual machines. And why we are creating? Uh, uh, we can save money. We can save, uh, you know. Uh, right, right, right. Managing. So, basically, when it comes to the virtualization, so we are using virtualization with the help of virtual, virtualization. We can mm -hmm. utilize any hardware up to 90% of its efficiency because in ideal world, nothing is 100%, right? we are having some losses. So we cannot utilize any component to its 100% efficiency, right? Some losses will be there. So you can consider up to more than 95% of uh, hardware resources we can utilize. So for an example, like just suppose, why we are using virtualization? So this is my laptop, right? Uh -huh. And in my laptop, as you can see here, I'm having 16 uh, gig of memory, right? And okay. My CPU is uh, i7 10 generation, right? And it's having eight logical processor, right? So yeah. I think that CPU and that memory, which is 16 GB, it is more than enough to run Windows 10, right? Why? Because yeah. as you can see, uh, so far it is utilizing 6 GB of RAM only, right? Yeah. Rest of the uh, 12 GB, not 12 GB. Yeah, rest of the 10 GB uh, memory is free for me, right? Means mm -hmm. it is just free. I'm not utilizing it unless, you know, I have to run some heavy software or some heavy loads on this machine, which we usually uh, usually do not require to run those <laughs> heavy softwares, right? And coming yeah. to the CPU utilization, so as you can see, my CPU utilization is 20 or 30% in between, right? And rest yeah. of the 70% of CPU is free for no use, right? So... Yeah. With the help of virtualization, what we can do, we can utilize that free memory the and free, free memory. Yeah, right. So, mm -hmm. for an example, I have installed VMware Workstation Pro as a hypervisor here in my Win10 machine, right? Mm -hmm. So, now let's see. I have created one machine here, and this machine is with 8 GB of RAM, as you can see here, right? So, yeah. if I powered this on, what is going on okay if i power this on in some time you will see this is increasing now right yeah and what is happening here i am 
using one more virtual machine on my physical hardware with the help of hypervisor, right? So yeah. this is known as the virtualization. What I'm doing, I've created uh, one more uh, <coughs> virtual machine here. Means mm -hmm. on a single hardware, I'm running two operating system. First one is this as a VM. And second one is my Win10 machine, right? So as you can yeah. see here, now my memory utilization is almost 40 GB, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do not want to drain my laptop battery so far. So let me put it on. Why it is failed to suspend? Okay. Try it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me shut down this one. <laughs> okay, so coming to the point. So basically, if you talk about the virtualization, the definition I already <laughs> explained to you, right? So yeah. For virtual for virtualization, we will be requiring the hypervisors, right? So basically, yeah. hypervisors are of two types, right? Type 1 and type 2 type of hypervisor. So, what are the type 1 hypervisors? Type 1 hypervisors are the bare metal hypervisors. Means, on a physical server, on a physical server, we directly install operating system as a hypervisor, right? And type 2 hypervisor is similar to VMware Workstation Pro. Why? Because to run that hypervisor, which is known as desktop application, we will be requiring some operating system means in my case it is windows 10 means first i have installed windows 10 as a operating system then i install that vmware workstation pro or virtual box or any other application right yeah. so this, this comes under the type 2 hypervisors right so okay. now in production type, type, type 1 can you explain one more time type 1 type 2 i understood type okay. 1 so type 1 is that just suppose uh, you have a Dell server in your okay. organization, right? Oh, or uh -huh. any server in your organization. So, okay. what you will do, you have to install hypervisor directly on this physical okay. hardware. Okay. Why? Because, okay, let me explain you in some easier way. So, how to do that, right? So, for mm -hmm. the same, just suppose if you have to install Citrix as a hypervisor, right? So, yeah. there is the ISO media we got from Citrix. So, what you have to do? You have to create uh, one uh, ISO, like bootable uh, media from this ISO file. You can plug mm -hmm. it on your uh, physical server or laptop or desktop, whatever you have. And you can uh -huh. boot it from that ISO media. It is a kind of Linux operating system, right? And yeah, there is no need it. of a Windows operating system, right? Right, Windows. there is no need of Windows operating system, right? It is a uh -huh. small ISO file for 581 MB in size, as you can see here. And what you can do, you can directly install this Linux over that physical uh, hardware and you will be able to access that uh, hypervisor over the web browser right yeah yes and you will be able to create multiple virtual machine means what we are doing we are eliminating that dependency of windows operating system over there right yeah but on personal devices we have no options right we can, i cannot use my personal laptop in linux flavor right it will yeah. be quite typical so Coming to the point again. So, what is Citrix and how it works, right? So, basically, the, uh, these are the working key components for Citrix. So, let's start from the left hand side. Okay. So, from your left hand side, all those devices are end user devices. Means, it could be a laptop, it could be a desktop, it could be a any other device, tablet or any other, right? So, on those devices, what user or what we have to do, we have to install a simple desktop application which is known as Citrix Workspace app or Citrix Receiver, if you ever heard about it, right? Yeah, Citrix so, Receiver. Okay. Yeah, we have to install that client application on desktop. After that, what user will do, user will open a web browser on, the, on their personal devices, right? And on the uh -huh. web browser, user have to enter a web address. Web address means storefront address. So storefront is nothing. It is a web-based URL for your organization where uh, your resources are hosted, right? So, okay. So the right-hand part, like this one part, right? Uh -huh. It is your data center, right? Okay. Where your resources are hosted. And this is 
एंड यूजर कंप्यूटिंग डिवाइस राइट एंड इन बिटवीन दिस इज नोन एज फायर वॉल राइट इट कुड बी आर इट कुड बी आर सिस्को फायर वॉल इट कुड बी आर सिटिक्स फायर वॉल वट एवर यू आर यूजिंग बट इट इज फायर वॉल विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू सिक्योर यूर इंफ्रा राइट फॉर अन ऑथोराइज काइंड ऑफ एक्सेस सो नाउ कमिंग टू द पॉइंट अगेन दिस इज एंड यूजर डिवाइस From end user device, what the user has to do? User has to enter some web address, like web address for your organization, like www. xyz. com. What uh, it should be anything, okay? And mm -hmm. after that, user will get a web page, and on that web page, what user has to do? User has to sign in, like his user okay. ID and his password or credentials. Uh -huh. User has to enter the credentials, and once credentials entered. What store front will do? Store front for what that query to delivery controller. So basically, delivery controller it is a master mind or it is a brain for a data center. Okay, its delivery mm -hmm. controller responsibility to to forward each and every query to uh, relevant servers. Okay, so in case user is authentic uh, authenticating the credentials, in that case, what it will do? It will get credentials from the store front server and it will forward those requests to Active Directory servers only. Why? because it is a brain and he, it like <laughs> delivery controller knows which is the correct server for authentication perspective right okay so yeah. it will forward the query to active directory server so mm -hmm. once uh, like uh, credentials are validated it mm -hmm. go back to the delivery controller and to the store front and what will do user will get a next page like log on page okay, okay. And okay. If, if credentials are not valid in that case what user will get Invalid credentials or username or something like that error on that web page, right? Okay. So basically, on so, the yeah, yeah, tell me. Uh, these uh, I know uh, these the uh, users are accessing through web browser, correct? Yes. Then uh, what we need uh, Citrix Workspace app, we need to install on the AI machine. Yeah, on the why we, machine. Why we need to install that Citrix Workspace app? <laughs> okay, so. For the same, basically, what happens? Actually, I'm not having any store front running in my, uh, right now. So, why Citrix uh, workspace is required? Like, I'm not having any uh, resource. Okay, anyway. So, <laughs> once user uh, provide the credentials over the okay. web page, right? After that, after successful validation of credentials, user uh -huh. will get one dot icf file downloaded okay and to launch okay. that file that application is required to create a secure okay. connection means if you are opening any pdf file you will get some file in dot pdf extension right so to uh -huh. open those pdf extension what you will be requiring adobe reader or any adobe reader okay. Right? okay so in okay. a same way it will get one dot icf file downloaded and that icf file can only open with the citrix workspace application right so uh -huh. that we will cover through practicals with yeah, yeah. Thing, but that is your answer why this yeah, that is required yeah. okay like okay. just suppose if you have to connect a server with remote desktop client so what you will be requiring rdp right yeah mm -hmm. so in this is a simple application nothing else okay so mm -hmm. coming to the point so basically <laughs> the core components here like delivery controller store front server city studio director license server and the hypervisor okay these are the uh -huh. hypervisor is not the core component these are the core component of citrix studio director license server store front and delivery controller right and uh -huh. active directory is active directory server it comes from the microsoft right and for yeah. database what we are using sql SQL. server right uh -huh. so i i hope you have some idea what is sql server it is used yeah. to store yeah. the yeah. database right Yeah. So whatever the database we will create for a Citrix site, all those database will databases so, will goes to the so, SQL Server. Okay. So now I don't think so. I have to explain those terms like what is AD and what is SQL Server, right? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So coming to the core component, storefront studio director. So basically, storefront is a web-based URL. Okay. I will uh -huh. let you know how to configure the store. Citrix Studio. It is a centralized management console it is just a gui console with the help of citrix studio you will be able to create the virtual machines you will be able to manage users you will you will be able to create a groups delivery groups right so it is yeah. a management console 
and what is director so city director basically it is a web based tool which is used to travel to virtual machines or vda kind of issues vda uh, like vdi related issues right like mm -hmm. if any user is struggling somewhere or vdi is not uh, working as expected right so in that case we will use city director tool to travel to the vdi issue got it okay we will cover up in with practicals in <laughs> deep license server it is something as you can understand with the term license it is responsible to allocate the license that's it okay mm -hmm. like just suppose if you are running 100 vdi in your uh, infra so what you have to do you have to go to the citrix and you have to purchase license for 100 vdi that's 100 it VDI, right yeah uh -huh. so if you are using 110 vdis right so in that case you have to pay some extra right so this yeah. is a task for license server okay, okay. and what it's Hypervisor, okay, so in the market for production, we are having uh, three big players for hypervisors. The first one is VMware ESXi, okay. Second mm -hmm. one is Citrix Hypervisor and third one is Hyper-V, which is from Microsoft. Microsoft, VMware, okay. Yeah, and uh, Citrix Hypervisor is from Citrix and third one is VMware ESXi is from the VMware, okay. So yeah, yeah. wherever you will go, you will get one of the hypervisor from those three only, okay? Uh -huh. And also we have some freeware hypervisors also available into the market, but like the big giants, the big uh, organization, they never used to, uh, <coughs> never prefer to use the freeware kind of thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay so quickly coming to, uh, is, is there any doubt in here? No, no. Okay. So coming to the, like layers, what kind of layers we have in Citrix. So as I told you, this is the internal user or external user, right? With Citrix workspace application installed. Where is that highlighter, okay. So this is the end user device, right? Internal or external user and the icon, what you are getting yeah. here, the circle, this is the icon for Citrix. Yeah. Workspace yeah. Application, okay. Yeah, that, you know, that internal user's device could be a uh, Android phone, anything, right? A that, tablet or anything. Tablet, Android, uh, Windows, Linux, Mac device. It could be anything. Okay. 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 So Even basically, they support Mac devices also. Yes. Okay. So we are we know this layer as a user layer. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and next layer will be your access layer. Why? Because in access layer we are using one web page to for user landing purpose right user will be landing yeah. on our web page and authentication on our firewall for authentication right so mm -hmm. this comes from whatever the security tools or firewalls or the web pages whatever we are using all comes under the access layer right uh -huh. and coming to coming to the next the control layer so control layer it it is something which is controlling the entire data center and operations right so mm -hmm. In control layer, Active Directory should be there. Why? Why? Because it is controlling the user authentication, right? Mm -hmm. And SQL Server, why? Because it is controlling the logging events, what users are doing, what is uh, processing, what is opening, right? Oh, all and the logs. Yeah. All the logs will be stored into the SQL Server. License mm -hmm. Server, it will be monitoring how the many license. users are utilizing the VDIs, what they have in data center, right? So it's mm -hmm. license server task. And what is delivery controller? As I told you, it is a core component. It is a mastermind mm -hmm. for Citrix. It comes from Citrix and to create the virtual machines, to publish the virtual machines, to end user, to publish the application, all those tasks will be performed with the help of delivery mm -hmm. controller. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of flow diagram or you can consider it as a, as a kind of chart diagram, okay? For your better mm -hmm. understanding. What is file server? file server usually uh, so basically basically yeah. if you uh, have to store something like just suppose you have created one virtual machine right and uh -huh. what you have to do you have to store that vdx the virtual disk somewhere in your organization right so you have yeah, two yeah. options right you have two options either you can store that uh, virtual drive on <laughs> local storage right yeah. but local storage fails anytime no one uh, knows, yeah. right? yes, so yeah. for the same what we will do we always used to prefer the network storage devices like SAN device or NAS device, no. right? Yeah. So what we will do, we will store all the 
data of end user, whatever it is on file servers only. Okay, we will uh, get some network path and we will use that network path to store the data. Okay. Okay. And what is VDA? This is known as the look. This is a control layer. It is controlling the things, right? But mm -hmm. this is the resource layer means whatever the VDI, whatever the VDA server operating system, desktop operating system, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, whatever it is, okay? Windows Server 2016, whatever the virtual machines we are hosting, we are hosting as a VDA, VDA known for virtual delivery agent, okay? So uh, okay. all those resources will be there only, okay? In resource layer, okay? Okay. Okay, if we share the applications and everything we saved there only, right? Yeah. Everything, we, but do, all those things comes under the resource layer. So, if someone asks you in the interview, how many layers are there in Citrix okay. or data center? So, what you have to do? First, user layer, hmm. access layer, <laughs> control layer, and resource layer. And uh, what in between the layers, you have to explain the terms, like what is control layer, what type of components will be there, right? It's quite easy. Hmm. To, for your understanding, right? You can okay. keep it in your mind. Like if someone asks you for access layer, so access means uh, you need a you need some gateway to access. It could be your yeah. uh, storefront or firewall, right? Gateway means it's a gate for entry prospective, right? If you yeah. have to enter somewhere, you will be requiring a path or a gate or a door. So that is your door. Okay. So <laughs> the the entire infra exclude this exclude this okay the entire infra is hosted on the hypervisor right yep. this is a physical hardware on which we will be creating all those virtual machines right and on mm -hmm. our physical hardware what we will get we will get network wi-fi storage processor all the computing devices will be there which is known as the hardware or we what we will do we will configure this hardware as a hypervisor got it yeah okay so <clears throat> i have divided the entire series into the 10 lectures okay so mm -hmm. first lecture is prerequisite what we are discussing right now okay mm -hmm. in the second uh, from the second one all those uh, sessions will be with the practicals only in the second lecture we will learn how to install and configure the delivery controller and other core components in the third mm -hmm. one, we will learn how to install and configure the hypervisor. In the fourth one, we will learn how to create a Citrix Gen app or Gen desktop site and how to configure the delivery controller to that site. In the fifth one, we will learn how to install VDA agent. Okay. In the sixth one, we will learn how to create machine catalog. Seventh one for delivery group. Eighth one for storefront server. How to configure storefront. Okay. So from 2nd to 8th, okay, all those will be practicals only, okay, we will be configuring the core things and nine, in the ninth lecture, what we will do, we will test our infra, like how it is working, means when user is accessing something from here, right, with the yeah. help of the storefront server, so he will be able to access the resources, whatever we will publish, right? Yeah. So in the ninth one, we will do that and 10th lecture, is for it's totally up to you in this we will discuss about the troubleshooting like uh what actions to be performed if something goes down and how to back up the things right so 10 mm -hmm. lecture is totally up to you uh, whenever you <laughs> test uh, the entire deployment you can come to me anytime and i will uh schedule a class for you are to cover all the doubts okay whatever you have on that time after creating the entire setup okay okay now coming to the infra quickly <laughs> so these are the uh, virtual machines uh, which we have to create okay so first machine will be our domain controller for domain controller i have allocated 2 gb of ram it is sufficient and that is my domain techamtech.com in your case domain may be different okay mm -hmm. second machine will be our delivery controller and for that delivery controller we will be requiring at least 6 gb of ram and mm -hmm. host name I have given for this machine is DDC. Mm -hmm. And again, I have joined this machine into my domain. Okay. Mm -hmm. For, uh, sorry, third and fourth machines will be our hypervisors. And for both the hypervisors, I have uh, allocated 10 GB of RAM and I have joined those hypervisors in my domain. Okay. So 
first one and second. Actually, second hypervisor is for redundancy perspective, okay, but uh, for learning perspective, we are good with one hypervisor as well, okay. One hyper okay. And again, uh, for our desktop client, what we will do, we will use two uh, Windows 10 client machine. And again, there is no required uh, requirement to use second machine. We are good with one as well, okay? Okay. So it is a simple infra. <laughs> so what you have to do, you have to configure a domain controller with uh -huh. ADDS, uh, sorry, uh, ADDS uh, will be there in domain controller, right? So uh, you have to configure a domain controller with DSCP and DNS, okay? And okay. In the second one, what you have to do, you have to uh, create a server machine uh, with Windows Server 2019 operating system. Uh, you have uh -huh. to change the host name to DDC and you have to join that machine into the domain, right? Okay. And for this one, you have nothing to do. I will let you know with the practicals only how to create that thing, okay? And Windows mm -hmm. 10, you can easily create and you can join it into the domain, okay? Yeah. So now, Coming to the requirements, we have only five minutes remaining. I think I have to schedule another session for you after this. Okay, no worries. Okay, so coming to the, I'm just typing the things here. Why I'm not getting that typing box. Okay, so <clears throat> coming to the uh, hardware requirement. For a lab setup. So, as I told you, like uh, 2 plus 6, it will be 8 plus 10, means 10, 16, 18, and 2, 20 GB minimum. It is it is minimum, okay? Yeah. Where it gone? Okay. Okay, so if you have more than that, it will be great actually for smooth operations, okay? So, mm -hmm. 20 GB is minimum hardware requirement and coming to the uh, like storage. So if you are having SSD in your device, so 512 is sufficient for me, okay? If you have mm -hmm. more than that, it will be great. Okay. And coming to the processor. So I think it should be uh, greater than i5, 8 generation. Yeah. If you have more than that, i7 or any other processor, it will be good, okay? But it should be at least of this with at least four cores, okay? Okay. And coming to the OS family, so, okay, go to the software. Which laptop you are having with you, Win 10 or uh, any other? Uh, Windows 10. Okay, so on Windows 10, what you have to do, you have to install VMware Workstation. Yeah, it's already installed. Okay, VMware Workstation, whatever the addition, 15 or 16, okay. You mm -hmm. have to create, uh, you will be requiring the server iso media for mm -hmm. 2019 okay and okay, uh, win 10 for each, iso media yes uh, for each uh, in a virtual machine how many processor we have to put for uh, each virtual machine so you mentioned uh, how many RAM. One, one is one is fine one is fine one logical processor is fine okay 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 and win 10 uh, and from citrix side like Citrix virtual app and desktop side. Uh, I will share that ISO media to you, okay? Okay. Uh, over your uh, Google Drive, okay? So okay. you can download those ISO media and also Citrix hypervisor ISO media. I will share with you over the okay. WhatsApp, okay? So that's it. The infra. So just let me know what hardware you have right now with you and what is the configuration. You there? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think uh, I have uh, 64 GB RAM in my laptop. Yeah, it is quite good. And what is the processor? Uh, i7 only. I think okay, so. Okay, yeah. so what, uh, what I will do from tomorrow onwards, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to create the 